You know, life is just real. And yet we, 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 we live in a time, and it's not really anything different from the beginning of time, but we've got a lot more tools to, um, to distract ourselves. You know, I was the one setting up, helping a, a big band uh, set up uh, for a big rock and roll concert. And we held all these boxes out of the semi, you know, we were stacking them up, and it was amazing because it's like, me being who I am, I'm always trying to figure out how everything works, why it works, even if I don't never use it again. I'm a very curious person, I used to tear everything I could apart, put a few things together, but I was notorious for taking things apart. And uh, anyway, as I, I was stacking them up, we just, I just said, there's a lot of these boxes, these big speaker boxes that don't feel very heavy. And the guy just looked at me and says, welcome to rock and roll. He said, rock and roll, we got a whole lot of fake. Just, just to communicate that something big is going on. He said, Mostly speak, there's only a few speakers in all these boxes that we're going to stack up that's going to look like this gigantic speaker system. And he said, frankly, it's going to crank a lot of noise. But he said, it's a lot of show. And that's rock and roll. And I thought, that's not just rock and roll, that's life. There's a lot of empty shells in life, a lot of empty things that go on. But in between all that, there's the real thing. <laughs> Isn't that true? And everybody right now is trying, you know, I mean, there's so much, uh, so much show. Uh, but it doesn't take away the fact that there's still a real life to be lived. I saw two young men walking up Sly Hill this morning just visiting and walking through the mud. And it took me back to my childhood of uh, some oh, late night walks that I had. We walked almost 10 miles on country roads one night when I was a junior friend and I and he said what were you doing that for I don't know what else was there but part of it was I was hungry for life I had a lot of questions I had I knew a lot about God and the Bible from church and all that but I had man I had so much that I, I life was I wanted to capture it I wanted to live it I wanted to I wanted the real deal, and I was, I was a lot of confusion about relationships and all that. And I, so we, so most if you know me, I, if, you, if you open up at all in that area, I'll get into a big discussion with you. I'll, and uh, so my friend and I walked those country roads just, just talking about life, and I thought, here's two young men, and most likely they're trying to figure out life too. And yeah, it's funny how we, we try to figure out some of the most awesome things about life with our peers. Who have no experience, have never really done anything, been anywhere, and yet there are experts that we go to. (laughs) And so as I saw these two young men, I go, thank God that there is a God that pursues us. Because in our pursuits, we would end up empty-handed almost every time because we look in the wrong places, talk to the wrong people, and didn't really have a foundation to begin with. And I don't know about your life, but I think all of us can look back and say, God's been good just to keep me alive. Let alone still hopeful. Let alone still, as my brother said, still have the hope that there's more to come. And not to give up yet. Sometimes my messages I feel like are kind of targeted, you know, for uh, people going through a particular thing. And then the rest of us are there to support them. And I think that's really true. We're a body. It's not, every, it's not always just about you and not always just about me. But we're as a body, we're trying to help one another. So certain times and messages and certain things that take place are for somebody. And I think that's a great thing when we can actually uh, give of ourselves to somebody else that's going through something and, and help them through. It's kind of cool, isn't it, to say, I want to be a part of your life. And, and, and yet I've never heard anything from the Word of God or anything from, about God that didn't, no matter how long I've heard about it, touched it, preached it, know it, the things I know the best are the, some of the things I love to hear the most. 
because it seemed like you have to be constantly reminded and it, it reinforces it. But today, I guess if I'd say, say something about down that line, I'd say this message is for you, each and every one of you. Uh, be a little selfish today and take it. Say, I believe. Those are powerful words. Those are powerful words. When, when you make the declaration that says, I believe. You know, I think about our military and when they go and take their oath and everything and they, you know, they get, uh, and, and our policemen and, and everybody, when they come into whatever group or whatever thing they're going to do, a lot of times there's some, a ceremony or whatever else and there's a place where you say, you know, I, I, I'm committed. I believe. If there's something that I think really tugs on my heart, it, it, it is, uh, there's a cry in our heart as human beings to want to be involved in something that's doing something, making a difference. And I think that's why you're going to find, you know, some uh, American, I mean, you're finding people, women, males, joining ISIS. It's just, at least it's a cause that I can say, I, I want to get, I want to be involved. It's crazy, but I want to be involved. But for you and I to say, I believe, that's, that's coming from the depths of the God-created heart that's within us. I'm fully persuaded about this. I'm committed to this. I'm, I believe in this. It's, it's an awesome thing. What I think is beautiful is that God gave each one of us the capacity to believe. There isn't a person you're going to meet that doesn't have the capacity to believe. And some of the testimonies, even in this small little body, are just pretty phenomenal. We got people that, a lot of, a lot of people look at them now as leaders and stable and all that. And, but I'm telling you, we've had some people in here that, that were horrible, mean, vicious, lost. And God, God spoke to them, God, and they, and they came to a point of being persuaded. They had the capacity to totally change their life by believing. And they did. And if I look at too many of you, I'm going to start coming up with stories. So I've <laughs> got some great stories in here. But you have the capacity to believe. And, you have, and everybody you meet, that's one of the most uh, awesome things. We've had people come through looking for money and gas money this week and all that. And, and there's a lot of times, folks, I just... Uh, I'm, I just I just bless them, take care of them. I don't try to preach to them, whatever else. It's, it's, I try to listen to God. But every one of them, you know, as they walk, drive away, I, I, just, I just say, I believe, God, you are working in their life. I didn't get a chance to share anything at all except to give them some gas and give them some food money. But I believe that you're working in their life. And it's great to, to be a part of something and yet not carry that burden. One of the things I'm working on real uh, diligently right now is to care but not carry the care. And I feel uh, that I, I'm the Savior of the whole world. He is. Say it one more time with me. I believe. It's fun to see the little kids up here and fun to see when they believe in themselves. Fun to see the ones that step out of their fear and start singing loud until they realize they're the loudest and nobody else is singing. And, and some of them, that feeds them and others, they back off. But... Uh, um, super fun to see the little kids, you know, I, I, I put out the water slide and these little kids come out and, and uh, especially the little ones, they're, they were, I, I, I bought a, uh, what do I want to say, but a blow up toy, you know, for them to ride on and I'm trying to find the right ones that will slide and all that. Anyway, one of them was, uh, it's built for uh, a big ice chest to be out on the lake. <laughs> We come up with everything. Anyway, so a square, you know, with room in the middle for a nice chest. And I said, I think that might work for a little one. Anyway, it was really cool because I could lay four little kids on there like sardines. Uh, and uh, and these little, oh, gosh, so cute. They come up and, and they go, this is really scary. <laughs> I'm not going to die, am I? <laughs> no, you're not going to die. Just lay on your belly. Do I have to be on my belly? Yeah, you can't, it, won't, it won't go anywhere if you sit in Okay. <laughs> I mean, just the trauma they're going through, you know. And then to see all four of them going down holding each other. And just then they start, woo! 
in, in uh, it was a real calm ride, and, and for the most part, and spun some, and, and then just their joy, their giggle, I made it, you know, Pastor John, I made it, you know, what a joy to see that, sometimes I think my heart longs for those days of just experiencing life that simply, that wonderfully, but every one of them has a capacity to believe, and not only to believe just for this or that, each one of us has the capacity to believe you know, in God and in a God that will help us in every situation we're in. You know, one of the things I love is when they, the gal I'm working with on my health, I love it because people always say, well, they tell me this is incurable, and she goes, nothing is incurable. She's so bold to just say, we can beat anything. I love that attitude. Don't you? Well, maybe it's very few. Maybe only a few. Maybe only 1% out of, uh, uh, you know, uh, one out of 100 that gets this disease ever comes out of it. But I want to be the one, don't you? Why be the 99? Man, just to, have, just to know that life for the rest, you know, and we got young people here, we got young families here, but we got some older people here, and to think, every one of us, we're going to face things. Every day we're facing things, but we have the capacity to believe and to win, every one of them. Hallelujah. Say it one more time. I believe. In Mark chapter 1, verse 15, it says, and saying, Jesus came preaching, he said, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. What my brother was sharing, God came into a form of a human body and fulfilled the law and fulfilled everything else. So the promise of God's love and life going in every one of us, the promise of incredible existence with God could take place to every person who was now bought and paid for. And he says, now this kingdom has come where God can actually live inside you. The kingdom of God is inside you. And he said, to get there, you're going to have to totally change your thinking about everything, and you're going to have to believe in this good news story. Now, you and I hear that all the time. We, we say that all the time here. But, boy, don't, don't underestimate the power of that. Your whole life success is going to be based on, can you believe in this story? And let, let me just say this. A lot of people don't believe. They hear it and don't believe it. I remember sharing the gospel with a girl when I was about three years out of high school. I was dating this gal that was in high school. Happened to be the principal's daughter. And I got along real good with the principal, and she told me that wasn't a very good thing for me in our relationship with her. It would have been better if my, her dad didn't like me. But anyway, I just shared the gospel with her, cause, you know, and uh, I did. I really just shared some of the deepest things I knew, and she, she just made this statement once. She says, what you're sharing is almost too good to be true. I said, it is too good to be true, but it is true. Uh, she says, I'm just really afraid that if it wasn't, I, would, I don't know what I'd do. I'd just rather walk away now. And she walked away. And I've thought about that for years. You know, that Not everybody is willing to take the capacity to believe this story and be vulnerable to believe this story. And to say, I, I, and part of the word for belief means I willingness to be persuaded that it's true. And so that's, that's true of the, the, the overall fact of, of, of believing just in Christ and coming as the Son of God. But it's true in everything else that He's going to speak to you. As Mike said, you know, everybody screwed up, but God still speaks. The point, though, you really want to catch is, are you listening? Or do you believe that He's speaking to you? It's great to know that He can accept you, but do you personally get involved in saying, I hear God? I hear God. I believe that God is actually speaking to me. I, do, I believe the stories he spoke to David and he spoke to them and those are great. But it comes down to really, but what about you? Do you believe? Are you willing to let yourself be persuaded that God absolutely adores you and that you're something awesome? When you travel and the girls just got back, Deb just got back and 
and uh, Tammy got back from China. One of the things that hits you a lot of times when you get overseas, especially in Oran and China, and the, the, the mass of people, just the masses of people compared to South Dakota. I know it sounds weird, but it's just, when you just see masses of people, it challenges your heart on the capacity of God to love every one of them. It's hard to see value in an individual when there's just millions of them running around and nobody even acts or cares like they care a thing about God. There's nations where very few Christians are there. They, they don't know hardly anything about it. And you're sitting there with a belief system that says God absolutely adores every one of these people, but they don't know about Him. They don't care. To know. I mean, they're, you know, and, and, and then you go, is this really true what I believe? Or is this just a South Dakota thing, an American thing, or whatever else? Do I really believe that, that the God that created everything absolutely has the capacity and the love and the intensity to love every person I meet, even though masses of them have, have known nothing about Him? It will challenge you. It will challenge you. Then if, if you can't wrap your heart and mind around that, then you're going to be challenged. Well, do, is what I'm believing really real or not? And for a lot of Christians, when they go to college and they get confronted and they start seeing a bigger world, a lot of them, they do. They lose their faith in God. In the God that they heard growing up in VBS or whatever. Because it's just like, hey, man, we're, we're a small minority here. And uh, there's all these other people believing it. Uh, we can't hardly believe that there's the, the, our God is the only God because there, it just doesn't make sense. But I can tell you what, one thing that's really awesome is being there is when you take a Buddhist that's been Buddhist for generations and, and the tsunami wipes out her family and she loses everybody. She lost all her kids and her husband and all her family. And one of our team helped her and got her some provisions and then shared the gospel and she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and she said, this is the most awesome day of my life. The joy of the Lord came into her life and she, she was... She lost everything and everybody, and yet she said, I came to know the Christ that loves me. And I mean, it changed, transformed her. I mean, when you see that firsthand, <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. So Jesus came to say, you've got to change your whole thing. In Romans 3.23, and the quits quote, quote of this, uh, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. Is that it? How many of you learned that one? How many of you think you know what it means? <laughs> if you've been to Believer's Fellowship very long, you know that you keep your hands down <laughs> no matter what the question is, unless it's, even if it's, do you want $1,000? Every once in a while, I'll give money out, but uh, most of the time, it's a trap. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter how you answer it. I have to say, I knew this. I went, to be, I went to recess time. I heard this. I memorized this. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And may I just say it this way? I don't know what it means for sure. And what I used to think it meant, I'm definitely sure that that's not what it means now. Simple verse. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's helped a lot of people recognize that they, were, that they needed a Savior. That's awesome. I, I have a hard time telling it to some people because even though it's helped many, it's hindered more. It's put people on the outside. For all have sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. Say it with me. I don't know what that means for sure. For all of sin, let's just look at the words for a little bit. For all, all means all. And uh, sin means miss the mark. For all have missed the mark. And fallen short. Of the glory of God. Let me give you some definitions for glory. I've done it before. Let me do it again. Last dictionary I looked at. The first word out was imagination. 
For all have missed and fall short of the imagination of God. The notion of God. The opinion of God. The viewpoint. The vision. The everything that makes everything God. God has a vision. God has a viewpoint. God has an opinion. Isn't that amazing? And he has an imagination. Isn't that wonderful? And he sees every person and has this incredible imagination and notion and viewpoint of them. And of their life. And he adores them and wants the very, very best for them. And he has an imagination far beyond ours of how good it can get. How wonderful it can be. I don't know about you, but my heart feeling when I was a little kid and everything else, for all have sinned, uh, that, that first of all brought up all my screw-ups and all, you know, don't cuss, don't, uh, man, uh, don't, don't, don't cheat anybody, don't... Um, don't break the ruler and hide it behind the shelf so the teacher doesn't find out. That was my first public sin that I can remember. Having a sword fight with the ruler, broke it. I'm a timid, shy kid. But it, I think, and I go, this will go right behind that big bookshelf. Nobody will ever find it. I guarantee you nobody saw it until they tore that bookshelf down. I crawled up about six feet, dropped, slid it down a little crack. Guilt and shame. <laughs> I was a good little boy. I carried that sucker. But I didn't want to teach her to find out. So for all I've sinned, that's, you know, for a lot of people, it's just those things you just grew up and fall short of the glory of God. And so it's like he falls short of his expectations, of his, his mark, his, his standard. You didn't pass the test. You didn't... You, you know, you didn't, didn't do the best that you should have done and all that. And now it's like, I don't see it that way at all. It's like, for all have fallen short of the imagination of what God had in plan for them and their in phenomenal life that he wants for them to have, and they didn't quite get there. And they're living way substandard compared to what he, he imagines for their life. I don't know about you, that's a whole different picture, isn't it? It is to me. It's just like, it just kind of like my brother said, it just took a, a bad situation and all of a sudden turned all, oh, you get to see your sister that you haven't seen for 91 years. Hallelujah. What a conversation. Let me show you Jesus. And what he said at last, oh, I'm so sorry it took you so long to get here. <laughs> Dang, kind of makes you want to volunteer, doesn't it? Send me, Lord. Got to have somebody get run over by a semi? Send me! <laughs> if we only knew. But thank God we don't know because we need to live out our lives. God also says this time on your earth is valuable. Don't, don't cheat it. Don't try, to, don't try to sneak out of it. Don't, 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 don't believe to get snatched out. Don't believe to, get, to die early. Man, God would say in His imagination, live a long life. Touch lots of people. Grow in the grace of God. What you get to do on earth, you'll never get to do. Again, value your moments here on earth. He is for us not to just die and go to heaven. He is for us to live here. He built everything for us, everything inside of us to live and to live long and to live well. If you study anything about the human body, you know this. The creator of this body put phenomenal systems in this thing to live. To beat, beat death all the time and to beat disease, it's just phenomenal what you can do against this body and have it still come up. The God that created you in His imagination and in all His thinking and opinion of that said, I want you guys to live. I want you to survive. I want you, I want you to beat the odds. I want you to have the close calls and come out of it. I want you to get attacked and I want you to come on top. I want you to be the head and not the tail. I want you to... So when it says, for all have sinned, instead of focusing in on our problems and how we fall short, he's trying to say, yeah, I'm trying to tell you how awesome a plan I got for you. Will you believe? Are you willing to be persuaded about my opinion about your life? 
Or are you willing to lay down your opinion of yourself And I was going to demonstrate, and I may sometimes still because demonstration is still powerful, but if I picked up one of the little babies out here and picked them up and held it tight and just said, what a loser, what a knothead you are, you aren't going to make it past first grade. You're going to spend, you're going to spend most of your time in jail, you idiot. If I, if I literally grabbed one of your kids and said that to them, how many of you would be a little upset, even if I was just doing a demonstration? Yeah, hands are going up like, don't grab my kid. And I was actually going to grab Olivia and actually have Olivia put a doll in the blanket so you couldn't tell. Because I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't sit there and say, what a fool, what an idiot. You're stupid, stupid, stupid. And yet I know some of you, that's your self-talk. I hear you say about yourself, I'm so stupid, you can't believe how stupid I am. Have you ever said that? Again, no hands are going up. (laughs) Have you ever thought it inside, just, oh, what a fool you are. Have you ever lost confidence that you're going to figure out what what to do in life? Have you ever lost confidence that you can actually rise up and win? Have you ever lost confidence where you just take a breath in the morning and go, oh my God, I don't know, I just don't know if I'm going to figure it out. I just don't know if I got what it takes. And you start saying things over yourself. And, 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 And if I can just help you change your perspective, if you wouldn't say it to a little baby, why would you say it to yourself? Why? Why? Oh, I know it's funny, and it's funny when you hit your thumb to start cussing yourself, calling yourself dumb or whatever else, or cut your hand. But it's almost like, well, you wouldn't do that with a precious little soul, would you? Most of you wouldn't. Although 99% of all men in jail were told by their daddies, you're going to be in jail. There are people that do do that. There are people that call everybody stupid and idiot, and there's a real strong impact. Like I said, you go into the jail ministry, you'll find out almost every one of them men, every one of them heard from their dad, you're an, you're an idiot, you're a fool, you'll, you'll, you'll spend most of your time in jail, and they do. It's almost absolutely scary that it's, it's this close to being 100%. So it has impact. And God's saying, I'm giving you, I want to give you the capacity to fulfill my imagination and my dream and my plans for your life in, in extraordinary ways, are you willing? Are you willing to take a risk and believe that when all the signs are different? Are you willing to believe that you're phenomenal and you're awesome and that you're, you, uh, are you willing? He said, the time has come. This message is being preached. Now, this good news. Will you believe it? And as my brother said, Part of that means you guys stop putting your deadlines out there. You guys stop saying, well, I've screwed up my life now. It's, I can't, there's no way I can recover. You've you got to lay that stuff aside. You've got you to say, man, my life is not over. I just turned 60. Dear God, my life is not over. Now I'm thinking about more and more what I'm going to do from this point out and how I'm going to help others step up at the same time. Man, I'm... Well, my brother shared this made me cry, man, when my dad said to his dad, you're 85, it's too dangerous for you to raise sheep anymore, you're going to stop now. And then to hear my dad turn in the 90s and say, I regret that decision. I regret that decision. Man, that makes me cry. What are you telling yourself? What is, is your life over? I heard guys you know, in their 70s that were growing up, well, too old or good for nothing, you know, put me out on the show, you know. And of course, the old ranchers say, oh, yeah, just take me out and put it like the old horse and shoot me. And I used to think, come on, man, Jack, what are you trying to do? But you know, the sad thing was they joked, but they start believing it. They started to believe it, that they we were worthless. Ah. We talked about focus a little bit a while ago, you know, when the fly swatters and really trying to hit a fly and focusing down. God has this glory for us, his imagination for us, 
And so to try to get a focus today, um, bear with me, but just whether you're, sh- what is success? What is, what, is, what is the falling, what do we fall short of? Are we falling short because we didn't live to be 100? Or, you know, for some of us, like, I'm believing God to live 140, you know, hallelujah, glory to God. And, you know, good, go. Um, I, I can't say that. I'm not fully persuaded I want to be 140. I'm not even persuaded I want to be 100 right now. What I am persuaded about is if I'm here, I want to be alive. If I'm here, I want to be functioning. If I'm here, I want to be alert. If I'm here, I want to have strength. If I'm here, I want to be living. Hallelujah. I don't want to be sitting. I don't want to be watching and observing everybody else. I don't mind cheering the kids on, but I want my own life. If I'm not doing that, then I'm ready to go. I'm not believing. Success to me is not just living long. In fact, some lives are very short and very successful. What is your faith? Are you believing just to live long? Are you believing for success or failure? Are you believing for hitting a mark in the business realm? Are you, are you hitting, we've got some teachers out here. Are you, are you believing for the mark of getting to the, your uh, uh, older age and looking back as a teacher that I flew with on one of my plane rides? She says, I, I tell you, I taught, I love kids and all that. But she said, you know, the beautiful thing was I got up every morning excited about doing my best to teach those kids. I go, bully for you. That's pretty awesome. But can I say that's not enough for me? I hope it's not enough for you. I hope your goals in your life and the vision that you have for your life is more than just retiring with a bunch of money. I hope it's more than just having an accomplishment of doing a certain thing in your field, being, being an NBA champion or being, being a, you know, making, you know, making wise decisions or whatever else, ending up with a billion dollars. Whatever. I hope your life is more than that because if that's what it is, you've fallen short of the glory of God. To get good grades in school is great. To get good, you know, get a good job is great. Whatever else to be, you know, the best, whatever. I met a lot of people on this trip and, and all the things that they've done. But I'm telling you, if that's the best you can shoot for, you fall short of the glory of God. Way short. Way short. And yet most of us, a lot of our focus is, is, is on our temporal world of how am I doing? How am I looking? Am I losing my hair? Am I gaining my muscles? Am I, am I gaining? Well, well, you know, hallelujah. Well, I, you know, whatever. There are so many things that you and I set for goals, and when we don't hit them, we get disappointed. Amen? And then life's just not quite as fun. But the question is, what are you focused on really winning? What do you really want out of life? Because what you believe is going to happen. Jesus said this, it's going to, man, be it done to you as you have believed. So it's important that you and I take the time to say, what do I really want out of this life? And to get that perspective, may I just say, whether you are super successful and a superstar or you're a nobody that nobody knows, what will it be 2,000 years from now? Now, I don't know about you, but that's really, really out there for me. I can't really, you know, but it does something in here to try to stretch this out. 2,000 years from now. Do you know you had relatives 2,000 years ago? Mike, I'm not sure. I think he came in on a, (laughs) he came just straight from God because, you know, so he has no, like Melchizedek. (laughs) Dan, you had relatives 2,000 years ago. There's still in your DNA information from their life. Not all of it, but bits and pieces were passed down, still still affecting you. Weird. You're going to meet those people. You're going to meet people that were there 2,000 years ago. And it's like, never did like relatives anyway. What do I care? Well, they're part of you. They had a lot more to do with your life than you realize. And for 2,000 years, they've been doing something else. What do you think they'd say about your goals? What do you think they'd say about your pains? What do you think they'd say about what you're going through right now, wondering if you're going to Your marriage is going to make it. Your kids are going to make it. Wondering if you're going to get your bills paid. Wondering if you're going to have an IRA. Wondering. What do you think they, from their perspective, what would they say? 
Oh, you better save money, Jack. You better not do that. Oh, yeah, you're going to pay the... Do you think they're... I mean, there are some kids out here that it was a life and death situation to decide to go down on that water slide or not. I mean, it was... And several of them come up and I said, do you want to go? No. I mean, and one little girl, she, oh, she ran down every time her friends went down. Yeah, wow, wow. And then she'd run back. And I said, do you want to go? No. And then she'd run down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And cheer everybody on. She was so into it. But when it came down for her to believe, No. And she'd walk right up to the tube, and I thought, she's finally ready. I said, you ready? No. I don't know why she came close. I think just wanted to be close, but feel, but not make. It's just like us. What do you really, are, what are you really believing for? And I think it, this at least makes sense to say, I need to take a look at where I'd be in 2,000 years. Is this going to be a big concern of mine? Is the goal that God... The glory of God that we all fall short of, is it just us being healthy and happy and vacation time and financially stable and and, and all these things that we, we, we value so much? In His view, do you think those are as valuable to Him as they are to you? I don't think so. Not that they're not, though. Isn't it amazing that every one of those things, God says, I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll help you be the head and not the tail. I'll help you in your finances. I'll help you in your health. I'll help you in your relationships. I'll help you with your wife. I'll show you how. I'll show you how to win. And every one of these situations, I'll show you how to get in. You know, if you get in a jam, I'll show you how to get out. Any situation you get in, if you've got the capacity to believe me, I'll coach you. I'll teach you. I'll show you the way out. I'll show you how to live. I'll show you how to live good. I want you to be full of joy, peace, happiness. I want you to be full of power. But we fall short because we go, we stop there and says, say, hey God, what's really valuable? In Matthew 24, 23, it says, then if anyone says to you, behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe him. And I'm taking this a little bit out of context. Maybe. I'm not sure. But part of this is just saying, everybody's saying, this is life. This is Christ. This is it. This, get involved in this ministry. Get involved in this. Get involved in that. That's it. That's it. That's it. And it's like, he's saying, don't believe him. Don't be running to every... There. He's in Florida. He's in Minnesota. He's at the revivals in South Africa. Fly there. Fly there. No, it's over in this meeting. It's over with this thing. It's over with this prophet. It's over with, he's over here in this. Oh, I mean, have we seen that? Yes, we have. We've seen. Oh, my gosh. The Holy Ghost is in Colorado. Get there quick. Go find Christ. And he said, don't believe them. Why? Mark 5, 36. Jesus walks up to a guy, a guy walks up to him and says, but Jesus, overhearing what was being spoken, said to the synagogue official, do not be afraid any longer, only believe. God's still speaking. No matter how much you've screwed up or how successful you've been, he's still speaking. No matter how far you've come in your walk with the Lord, he's still speaking. And one of the things he's still speaking, he's still speaking this to you. Don't be afraid, only believe. Oh, man, I don't know about you, but to have Jesus himself just stand right there, you know, and, and to really know that he was there and hear him really say to me, John, don't be afraid. Only believe. And to get, he's got that smile on his face like, I'll show you. We're coming out of this thing. We're going on top. We're beating it. Man, when you have a coach, you got a teacher, you got a friend, you got a, a husband, you got a wife, you got, you got a kid. Uh, you know, I had a, I had a stranger. I had a stranger on the plane. 32-year-old woman, DJ from California, hurting, just broke up, messed up. I prayed for her. I encouraged her. She asked me what I was doing. I said, I'm going down to restore her. And she looked in my eyes just like Myrna did that time when, 
Holy Ghost took over her, and all of a sudden she's this hurting woman, and da 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 da, talking to, and she knew who I was. She, I could tell she respected me, and she looked me right in the eye and says, "When you get down there, you find you, and you become you again." And it was with firmness. It was with conviction. It was with, and I, I yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I thought, here, I'm ministering, but, and that was a fulfillment of one of your words to me. Just relax, John. I'll meet you. She, he, God met me through that woman. Brandy is her name. Give me a focus for that trip. He says, be you. He's still speaking. He's still speaking the same thing. Don't be afraid. That works every day. It works in every situation. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Every situation you're in, don't be afraid. Believe. We talked about it last week. How do you know what you're believing in your heart? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 13.5. Test yourselves. Boy, I hate test. I find, you know, I've been trying to not admit that for years, but boy. Just a driver's exam drives me crazy anymore. Here's the deal. Whether you pass a test or not in natural realm doesn't really mean a whole lot whether or not you're going to be successful. I'm looking out at Sarah there. She's a nurse. She studied up. You're a nurse. Studied up. But let me tell you. There's a lot of nurses, doctors, medical people that pass all the tests really well. They'll kill you. <laughs> There's a lot of pastors that got their doctor degree and everything else. I wouldn't listen to them for a second. Anyway, forget that. Test yourselves. So you've got to get through that, okay? To see if you're in faith. Self-test. The question is, on the test, am I in faith? Am I in faith? You're given the test. You've got to come up with the questions. You write the key There's nobody else testing you here. Really don't matter what the world says. Don't matter. And Jesus is even saying, now he's not even saying he's testing you. He's saying, you, come up with the test. Come up with the key for the right answers. And see, and see if you, if you pass. Now, I kind of like that, because I'm a real good BSer. <laughs> Why, some of you hate it. How many of you hated essay questions? Oh, those are my joy. If I had the slightest clue what the question was about, I could, there was times I, I came up with a whole paragraph that was not even close because I didn't understand the word. <laughs> I thought it meant this, so I wrote this. And I still got an A because I wrote so much stuff. <laughs> e for effort, you know, hallelujah. Just give me a shot at it and I'll BS you. But this one's mine. Test yourselves, examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourself? Do you not recognize this about yourself? That Jesus is in you. Unless, indeed, you fail the test. What a simple verse. What the heck does it mean? Man, a lot of people are reading two or three chapters a day, you know, a book a day, and that's all good, man. I'm, that's all good. But, man, I can read one verse and say, oh, I'll be here for a couple years. <laughs> Dang. And the worst part was I thought I used to know what it meant. I could have passed my old test, but the keys change. And it looks a whole lot different to me now. Test yourself to see if you're in faith. 
Examine yourself, or do you not recognize this about yourself, that Christ is in you unless you have failed the test? Let me ask you, hands this time. How many believe that Christ is in you? So what does that mean? You passed the test. I passed. I passed. Slow down. Slow down. Before you run off for fear the teacher's going to change the report card. What does that mean? One more time. How many of you are fully confident Christ is in you? Okay. So you pass the test. What does that mean? It means test yourself to see if you're in faith. Oh, that means you're in faith. That means you're a believer. That means you've got not only the capacity to believe, but you have the ability. You now believe. Say it with me. I'm a believer. You know what that means? That means anything that comes your way. You know how to believe in the Christ that's inside you to overcome it. You've already passed the test. They already said you got the certificate. You got it. What it means is you can actually now practice medicine. (laughs) And yes, you're still practicing. And we're still practicing, but it means I got, I passed the test. I believe. Nothing is impossible to me. In every situation, I need to be reminded, fear not, only believe. I pass the test, I believe. Now, can I take you back to this little baby? As you hold one of these little children, and you start saying to them, you're going to make it. You're going to overcome every... I grab my little grandkids, and I think of all the stuff that could hit them. Um, forgive me, but I'm finding out some of the stuff I'm dealing with, my health issues happened to me when I went to the hospital. And God's taken me back, and uh, I had two major surgeries when I was a little kid. I pretty much don't talk about much, I blotted out, and just said it wasn't that tough, it wasn't that bad. But God's been taking me back, and I've been weeping and crying. As a little kid, I was scared out of my mind. I was left alone sometimes. What they did to me was actually torturous. <laughs> it actually would make a great torture. <laughs> they don't do it that way anymore. And forgive me, but I just, just this week I was there and I heard a little boy say, I've been stuck here a long time. It was me. I heard myself. Kind of like the genie in the bottle. <laughs> 2,000 years <laughs> in a cramped face place will give you a crooked neck. I got the capacity to believe. I believe. And so when I hold a little kid, I go, I don't know what you're going to go through. And sometimes it doesn't take much more than a sliver in your finger to give all kind of fear in your life. But I believe, and I know you're going to make it. Angels are about you. And I look at my, grab my grandkids, and I pray over them, and I think about that, and I go, God, it scares me sometimes. And I go, no, but I believe. I know you took care of me. You're going to take care of them. Your plan for them is redemption. What if they don't come? No, he's never going to quit. He's never going to. What if they screw up? And if they really, oh, he's never going to give up on them. He's never going to quit redeeming them. He's never going to. Man, and all of a sudden, my faith comes up for them. And I go, I'm not afraid of what my grandkids are going to face in this world. They're going to know how to overcome. Why? Because I believe in a God. That speaks to people. Each one of you. And as we get up in our years and we're going to face those years and we got somebody on coming up, 
I'm not going to be left alone. And that little boy back then when I was left alone and terrified, he's finally set free (laughs) to know he'll never be alone. Would you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it again, I believe. One of the first things about this whole walk is this is not a group effort. This is not a couple's thing. This is not a family thing in the way you think. It's you. Nobody else can believe. Nobody can believe for you. You believe. You If all abandon you or if everybody's going the same direction, it's still your choice. What do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe? Oh, if I could only get my husband. No. What do you believe? If I could only get my wife. No. What do you believe? It's got to come to a point where you have nobody else but just you and God and say, I believe in him. He's my savior. I don't care what the preacher says. If he thinks I'm disqualified, fine. I believe. I don't care about everybody else's test of what they got or what a good Christian is. I believe. I pass the test that's important to me. I believe that Christ is in me. Do you know the beautiful thing after that? Is you start realizing I need you. I need you because the Christ in me and how he's going to coach me comes from other people. I can't isolate a gal, a 32-year-old gal in business class on a plane spoke words to me because Jesus placed those words inside her. God spoke words in a Canadian couple and they're not even saved for me. So I'm not going to isolate, but the strength of it starts, I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody in here today has just crossed a line. You finally understand that it's your choice. It's your choice. You felt like you failed a lot and you felt you wondered if you're going to make it and today you, you see it differently. You see it and it's my choice. I don't have to measure up to everybody else's expectations. It's my choice whether I'm going to believe this or not. And I just, and today somebody just, I've just been, been hearing it in here saying, I, I, I'm, I'm believing. I'm believing. Hallelujah. And I want to just say, right on. <laughs> right on, man. I'd lay hands on you. I'll pray for you. I would bring you up front and show you off to everybody. But the truth is, that's not what it's about. It's about you coming to confidence that you passed the test. And you just came to that confidence that you passed the test. Hallelujah. If you want to talk to me afterwards, you come running up. We'll talk, we'll hug, and we'll love on each other. But I want you to know, you made the choice. And God says, yeah, you've not fallen short now. You're not one of the alls anymore. I fell short of the glory of God. But for every one of us, no matter how far we come in our Christian walk, may I be a voice in the wilderness. With all the confidence you can muster, I don't care how long a Christian you've been, how long you've been doing this all the confidence you can muster up right now you got the capacity if you use the capacity you got now more will be added done to you with all the capacity you got right now and the willingness you got say it with me I believe I believe I believe thank you Jesus I believe you I believe you're in me. I I, I not only believe you're going to take care of me and heal me, but I I believe in 2,000 years from now, I'll be there right beside you. 
never to be cast away ever. See in this imagination that you've got for me. I believe. I believe. I know I believe. I'll never be alone and I'll never fail. Whatever this temporal world looks like is really not that important to me either anymore. I don't really care how rich I get. I don't really care how many relationships I have with everybody. I don't care if I'm a superstar or, if, or a, a nobody because that which is really important, I know. I believe. I'm not asking for a demonstration, but I'm asking you, cross the line. Come on, cross the line. Take a bold step inside your heart right now. And boy, just grab hold of this and hang on to it. And keep saying all afternoon, grab your little self, hallelujah, and hold yourself in your arms like a little baby and just say, you're going to make it, man. You're gonna, you've already made it, hallelujah. And by the way, when you really know that He's in you and you're in Him. All these temporal problems like getting healed and getting the finances you need, they all get real easy. Because they don't matter anymore like they used to. You don't have fear because they're not controlling you anymore. You'll win in those two. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, I believe. Turn to somebody close and look them in the eye and just say, I believe. I believe.